Greetings one and all. This is a little simple cell phone charger emergency power supply I put together using 18650 lithium ion batteries. Obviously you could pre-charge a bunch of lithium batteries and then have them with you and swap the batteries out and maintain your power for quite a while if you're on a long hike or something to that effect. Here's the star of the show, a little battery protection board that was purchased via eBay from China. They're about a dollar in quantities of one. Here's the board input power connector. It's a barrel style 5.5 by 2.1 DC type input power jack. This is a little solid state voltage regulator I'll be using. It's an LM7805 and a TO-220 case. This particular unit is a salvage unit, a dollar each in multiple quantities off of eBay. Here's a little heat sink for the 7805. This particular unit is a salvage unit, but again, probably around a dollar or less off of eBay in multiple quantities. Here's the battery holder for the 18650 batteries. They're about a dollar each, you buy them in quantity again off of eBay. Here's the USB 2.0 style jack with a pigtail, again about a dollar off of eBay, including shipping from China. Here's the heatsink compound I'll be using for the uh, 7805 between it and the heatsink. Here's my car power supply for charging the batteries. I already had this one, again it's an old style Radio Shack unit that uses multiple tips to get varying DC jack configurations. Here's the AC power supply, 9 volts as listed, it comes complete with the correct DC jack for plugging into my little cell phone charger. Here's what I'm using for my mounting substrate, it's a piece of PVC usually used for exterior trim on a home, it's about an inch and a half wide, quarter inch thick, it's widely available at Home Depot or Lowe's. Here's how I soldered the little .33 microfarad capacitor across the two terminals of the 7805. Trust me, working with something this small is never easy. As to where I got the surface mount, well, I took a few things apart a while back, and as you can see, I've got a fairly good collection of small surface mounts for use in specialized projects like this. Here is the LM7805 with the .33 microfarad surface mount capacitor soldered in place as well as three pieces of 25 gauge wire. Here's a little battery protection board with two pieces of 22 gauge wire soldered to the power connections. Note I've bent them in 90 degrees. These 90 degree bends will be used to secure the board and keep it from moving around. They also act as headers to solder to for everything else that's going to be put in the board. These are four quarter inch spacers I'll be using to separate the two PVC boards or protect the wiring while allowing a little bit of cooling to take place if necessary. Here's a couple shots of the battery protection board with everything soldered to it. Uh, note this is all the connections that were required to make the project work. And as you'll see, the board has been anchored back into the PVC so it can't move around. Here are a couple of views showing the uh, heat sink and 7805 mounted in place. Here's a view of the input and the output connections, just as they will appear on the board. I elected to go ahead and use wire ties, at least for the time being. I may come back and make a permanent bracket for this a little later. Several things to remember when you're getting ready to check it out after you've got it put together. First thing is, the battery holders are very tight. You'll probably have to manually slide the batteries forward to make them get a good contact. The second thing to note is that the board will not power up until you put power on the board. Simply installing two batteries in the holders, even if the batteries are good, and having battery voltage on the protect board will not give you an output. You must first power the board up. Here's the finished board with the back protection board in place. I'm definitely not going to claim any points for style here, but that was never in the intent when I put it together. I basically designed this so that I could put it in a larger piece of PVC pipe and then drop it in the jet ski and not worry about having the cell phone battery go dead on me while I was out on the water. By capping off the PVC pipe with this unit inside of it, I pretty well made a watertight unit. 
And if I don't have to open it, the unit is not exposed to the salt environment, so it should continue to last for quite a while. Again, in this case, it was just an emergency backup for the cell phone. And here's a schematic of our little cell phone charger. Well, if you're liking what you're seeing, uh, consider giving me a like and even think about subscribing. I got quite a few other little tricks coming on the way. There may be something else coming down the line you definitely going to want to see. Until then, take care and have a great day.